Hey, it's Juan here, and today I wanted to show you how you can leverage LinkedIn to generate targeted leads, increase sales for your direct primary care clinic. So as we all know, LinkedIn is a powerful platform, right? It has business professionals, business owners, your ideal client, right, that you want to connect with. Not only that, but LinkedIn is 277% more effective at generating leads. The main reason for that is because there's still organic reach within that platform. As you might have noticed, you take the time to record a video, right? Um, you get in front of the camera, you're nervous, and you record your first video, and then you upload it onto Facebook, and 10 people see it, right? Despite you might have a couple of hundred of followers, only a handful of people will see that. And that's because Facebook wants you to pay to show your content, right? They're trying to make money. But LinkedIn, when you post your that same video onto LinkedIn, it's gonna get a ton more uh, of organic reach. So it's important to distribute that same video throughout different platforms, right? Whether that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, right? Make sure you're also posted on LinkedIn because you're gonna get a lot more for your efforts, okay? The plan is A, build our network, right? I'll talk a little bit about the 500 effect. Next, we wanna manage that network with something I like to call intelligent inbound. And then C, we want to accelerate our reach with automation tools. So when you start building your network, it's important to have at least 500 connections. That's going to check off that mental box in a lot of people's head of social proof. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. If you go over to my profile, when somebody visits your profile, um, right here, you can see how many connections they have. They have less than 500. It's going to give you a specific number. Juan has 12 connections or 100 connections, right? Anytime you cross 500, it's just going to say 500 plus. You can have a total of 30,000 connections. But once you hit that 500 mark, it'll just say 500 plus. So it's kind of important to just meet that one kind of checkbox in people's head, right? You know how we are. Um, it's a popularity contest sometimes. So we just want to show people that, hey, we're well connected, right? Average CEO has 900 connections. But more importantly, first degree connections unlock second degree connections. What this means is that if I have 500 connections, I can now tap into their network, right? You can't just search somebody on LinkedIn and connect with them. You have to have a common connection between both of you, right? So that's why it's really important to build uh, these first degree connections because A, you're gonna tap into their network, but also you can message your first degree connections. And we'll go into that here in a minute. Before we do anything, we need to optimize our LinkedIn profile, right? If we're gonna put our time into this, right? If we're gonna record our videos, post a blog, you wanna make your profile as visible as possible. So what you'll do is you'll go over to your LinkedIn profile and then go to me go down to settings and privacy, go to visibility, and then edit your public profile. And you wanna make sure this is toggled over and it says on. And then you wanna make sure this box is checked, the public button. Why? Because not only will LinkedIn members see my content, but also, our content will be visible on Google. So now we get the benefit of our articles, our posts being seen on Google, which is not only gonna increase the visibility of your profile, of your article, but we can backlink 
our website, right? And that's going to help our organic search ranking. So really important step. Make sure you go to your profile and make sure uh, this setting is set to public. The other big mistake I make, I've seen is that most people's profiles are like resumes, right? It's all about them, right? Juan went to school at this university. He graduated this day. Um, he volunteered here. I worked here, right? It's all about me, 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 right? But what you want to do is convey how you can help people, right? What can you do for them, right? So I'll give you an example. My banner, it talks directly to who I'm trying to reach, right? We touch on that pain point of, hey, are you ready to escape our broken healthcare system? My headline, it's not about me, right? It doesn't have my titles and ER nurse and I save kids and, right? All this crazy stuff. <clears throat> it says who I help, right? I help healthcare providers. If you're a DPC owner, I help small business owners in Houston save money on healthcare, right? Something along those lines, right? Who you help, if you're a DPC practice, you're local, so you wanna make sure you add the city, right? The about, right? You expand on that. How can you help them save money, uh, reduce turnover, keep their best talent, right? And then, always 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 end with your call to action right we want them to know that we want to talk to them we want to give them our contact information we want to make it easy for them to contact us and that touches on the last point right always have a call to action in any content and all of your profiles Last thing, um, if you need a banner, let me know. The link is here. I created it in Canva, which uh, you can create a free account. Um, there's templates you can use. Simply uh, type in LinkedIn banner, and then you can add this kind of text and your logo. You can even add your number here, how people can get, can get a hold of you if you want. Now that our profile is ready, let's start connecting with people right and who else better to start with than those that already know you right people that are already in your network so we're going to want to start by inviting our email connections so the way you do that is you'll go to your linkedin profile you'll go under me actually you'll go under network Scroll down to more options. And then what you'll want to do is connect your Gmail account or whatever email service you're using. And what this will do is it'll pull your contacts and then invite them to connect with you on LinkedIn. So that's a quick way to get you up to that 500. Um, another kind of trick you can do um, is upload a list. So if you have a list of small business owners uh, patients, anybody you want to connect with, you can upload that list and then send an email for them to connect with you on LinkedIn. And one last thing, do this at least quarterly, right? This is not something you just do once. You want to keep doing this at least every three months because we get new contacts in our emails, right? And you want to invite them and stay connected with them. Rules of thumb. Download the app, right? I'm pretty sure you have it. You want to be available. People message you. You want to be able to reply and know that you got a message. Uh, don't connect with brands. Uh, some people will create a profile, and instead of adding their information, they'll put a logo as their picture and then make it a company page. Don't do that, right? You want to know who you're doing business with. Um, you want to know who they are, right? The other thing is don't connect with with profiles that don't have a picture on them, right? Why haven't they done it? They might be busy. They probably don't use the platform, right? We only get 30,000 connections, so we want to use them wisely. And then lastly, join groups that are relevant, right? So if you have a DPC practice in 
Houston and you want to connect with physical therapists because uh, they would be not only a good uh, patient, but you could cross, you know, promote each other's practice, um, then join their groups, right? Physical therapists of Houston. And what that does, it allows you to see who's in the group and also connect with them, right? So you can start building uh, your connections, right? Build that network. Next, I want to cover on how to manage that network with something I call intelligent inbound. And we'll go over what that means here in a second. And the first thing you want to do is use the search features. Something I just wanted to touch on that I don't want us to forget is the point of anything, right? If you do a billboard, if you do direct mail, if you do a blog post, if you pay for ads, what these all have in common is that we're trying to get them off these platforms onto your sales funnel or your website. I recommend a sales funnel. They convert better. They're geared to collect that person's information so that you can build your database. And then once they're in your database, you can communicate directly with them through email, right? You don't have to pay more Facebook ads to get back in front of them, right? They already know who you are. So the point of all of this, right, is to get them to your sales funnel. So never lose track of that, right? We're trying to get them here. If they don't opt in, that's okay. We're going to have a retargeting Facebook campaign and we're going to show up on the news feeds. If they do opt in, we have them in our database. And our goal is to get them to that booking page so that they can book a time to talk with us, right? So our goal is to get them off social into our booking page onto our sales funnel so that we can talk with them, right? I'm going to go over the search feature now, which is how we'll start to grow our network. So if you go to your LinkedIn, we'll start from home. First thing you're going to do is go to My Networks. You're going to click on Connections. Next thing you're going to do is search with filters. Then you're going to click on All Filters. First thing we want to do is toggle this over to second degree connections, right? First degree, there already are connections. We can message them. When we publish articles, they see it. So we need to now invite their friends to connect. Since we're local, we're going to filter our location. So we're going to say Houston. And now what we want to do is narrow our list. I recommend um, doing it by either industry or title. So you'll want to come down and maybe you want to connect with physical therapists. So this is gonna pull a list of physical therapists. You're gonna hit apply. And here we have 229 connections of people I can connect with that are in Houston that are physical therapists. There's a couple of ways to do this. When you first start, I recommend doing it manually. And you want to send out at least 20 up to 50 connection requests per day, right? This is something you can do every morning, right? Just make the habit of it. I'm going to show you ways to automate this. But initially, right, get a feel for it, right? See who you're connecting with. LinkedIn, right, it's not like Facebook where you get automatic replies or acceptance. Um, it might take a couple of days, right? So there's a more of a lag, right? People aren't as active on LinkedIn like they are on other social media platforms. But start sending the connection request. Whenever you send the request, if you add a note, just say, hey, I noticed you are in the Houston area and I would love to connect. And that's it, right? Don't pitch them. You just met them, right? 
don't be that person that um, starts trying to pitch them on the first encounter. Think of it as dating, right? You meet a girl or a guy and you're like, hey, my name is Juan, right? I'm not like, hey, I think you're beautiful and I'd like to date you, right? And have kids with you, right? And that's what a lot of us do. We They just accepted our connection request and we're already trying to pitch them, right? We're trying to commit with them, but let's give them some time, right? Let them to get to know you. So add a note saying, hey, it's Juan. I noticed you're in the Houston area and I would love to connect and leave it at that. That's it. All right. So we send in our request. One cool thing I like to do is I created this list. So I'll grab this URL and I'll copy it and then I'll paste it on my notes. Paste it there. And every day I just click on the link and it opens it up. And then I go send some more requests. I'll do 20 a day, at least 20, sometimes up to 50. And that's it. That's my LinkedIn uh, connection request strategy. All right. Once you go through this, then you filter another list, right? And you keep doing that until you keep growing your network. I, I know I keep saying this, but it's super important, right? then the point of all of this is to get them to book a call with you, right? So keep that in mind when we're doing any type of content. Um, some tools now that you can use, automation tools and tactics. Um, there's different tools you can use to help you with this. Um, let's go to LinkedIn Helper and I'll show you what they do. Typically these are uh, Google Chrome extensions. Uh, they're some are free, um, some are 15 bucks. I've seen some for $9 a month. Um, and what this allows you to do is to automate uh, your connection request and a bunch of other things, right? Um, so what you can do is when you get, get this Google Chrome extension, um, you'll have your list pulled up and then you can just tell the uh, tool, hey, uh, connect with 20 people from this list every day, right? And it'll do it gradually throughout the course of a day. And it kind of times it out so it doesn't seem like you're just sitting there hitting connect with everybody. Um, so it'll help protect your account so you don't get flagged. Um, with any of these tools, right, don't abuse them. Don't spam people. Do 20, 30, 40, 50 tops connection requests per day. This is a long-term game, right? We're not looking for a quick win we're gradually going to grow our network, right? So you can use these tell tools to help you do that, but just don't take it overboard. So these are different tools that you can go check out and see which one you like better. Some tactics that you can also do. This is where the intelligent inbound comes in. And I like to think of it as uh, jujitsu, right? Anytime you train jujitsu or chess, you're always thinking maybe one, two, three steps ahead, right? And this is a way of doing that uh, within this strategy. And what's cool is that, like, let's say we do a automat automated profile visit. Whenever you visit somebody's profile, they get a notification saying, hey, Juan just visited your profile, right? And you can automate that. You can tell one of these tools, um, hey, go visit um, this list of people and visit 40 profiles a day. And it's like playing tag, right? We're just tagging them and saying, hey, I'm here, right? Check out my profile, right? I can help you. I'm not messaging them. I'm just sending them that profile visit which will trigger them to come visit my profile and remind them, oh, look, Juan can help me, right? So that's one trick you can do or one um, strategy, right, that I like to use a lot. The other one is you can endorse them, right? You can, uh, whenever you set up your account, you set the skills um, that you have, right? Charge the thinker down at the bottom. Um, so here are my skills, right? And you can endorse them and just say, hey, Juan is good at this, right? And it just, uh, it, you're not actually leaving a recommendation. You're just endorsing them for that skill. So you can automate that process. And then also you can message those, your first degree contacts. 
on this one, you know, don't spam people. Um, what I would do, I don't, I really don't use this feature, right? Because I want to have an authentic uh, communication with them. So as you're connecting, right, you're seeing their content. If they write or post something that's relevant and I have something to say, right, I leave a comment, right? Um, or I might message them, say, hey, that last post or that article, I love this part about that, right? You're initiating that conversation. But for you to be able to have these opportunities, right, you need to grow your network. And that's why it's important to constantly build that network, right? So you start to expand who you can reach. You can also comment on their content, message them, but don't spam them, right? Just be nice, right? Tell them, hey, that was a great article post you just did. This is what I thought about it. Or if I do message them, I'm going to share something of value, right? I'm going to say, hey, um, Juan, I just recorded this video on how to reach uh, small business owners uh, through LinkedIn, right? I noticed you're active and I thought you might find it useful, right? It's something they can actually use. I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm just trying to uh, lead uh, by giving first, right? It's important also uh, to narrow your search to at least a thousand contacts or less. A lot of these automation tools, they'll only pull in a thousand contacts. Uh, so whenever you create your list, right, we went under my network, connections, search with filters, all filters, second degree, city, you know, try to filter this, this list down so that whenever you hit apply, there isn't a hundred, no, 1.3 million results, right? <laughs> you want to narrow this down to under a thousand contacts. And that's how we're going to be able to use your automation tools. Now, lastly, I wanted to mention it's important to commit to publishing weekly articles for a couple of reasons. And I'm going to show you what LinkedIn has to say about that. So your content becomes part of your professional profile, right? Which is displayed with your connections and your followers on their newsfeed and sometimes through notifications. Members that aren't in your network can then follow you from that article because it'll surface in their newsfeed. And not only that, but your article becomes searchable both on and off LinkedIn, right? This is the key part. As we mentioned, if I'm gonna take the time, right, to write an article or create a video, I want to get most out of that time and effort, right? And the way to do that is by uploading it into different platforms, right? YouTube, Facebook, but don't forget about LinkedIn, right? People always forget about LinkedIn. And this is by far one of the most powerful platforms, especially when it comes to organic reach, not only through the platform, but also on Google. So use the publish article feature, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. So anytime you publish an article, right, I'm going to give you an example. I have a list here of different type of uh, relevant topics, right, that would apply to DPC. So you have your list. These are terms that people are searching, right? We pulled this list. And let's say you, you're, we're gonna start with small business topics, right? So let's say you're gonna make a video on how employers can benefit from direct primary care, right? So that's gonna be our article. First thing I would recommend doing is making a video out of this, right? Hit three topics that you want to hit, right? Three points. Record that video. And then first start by uploading that video onto YouTube, right? Google owns YouTube. 
So if you use their platform, they will reward you. Right, title, video, short summary. You don't even have to type it out, right? Just the short summary and then call to action, right? We're gonna grab this same video, this same description, and just copy and then paste it and make this into an article. So the way we'll do that is you're in LinkedIn. You can only do this from your desktop, so you can't do it from your uh, cell phone. Go to Write Article. You're gonna upload your banner. This is the exact same banner I used for YouTube. So I have a banner here that I used. It's the same one, it's even the same dimensions, right? You're gonna create it once and then publish it on different platforms. So actually, let me go ahead and do that. So here's my banner. And then just make this smaller. and click this one so it becomes small. So here's our banner, it's the same one I had on that video. Copy paste your headline, and then copy paste this same information you did typed here, right? No need to make it fancy, make it different. Copy this. What I like to do is after you paste that, so you paste it, leave the first line, and then here what you do is you add that YouTube video link. So you'll grab your YouTube video link, uh, which if you hit share, hit copy, and then post it there. So here's our video link, right? Make it look nice. At the bottom, I like to just uh, add my kind of a short bio of who I am. I'll show you one that's already done that way. Um, you can see it, but this is basically it, right? Um, use the same banner, copy your headline, paste your text, put the video in the middle, right? Put your description and then end with a short uh, summary of who you are. And I'll show you what mine looks like real quick. So this is it, right? I uploaded it, title, first sentence, video link, text, couple of spaces, and then italics, bam, with the call to action. And that's it, right? We created it once and we're gonna use it in different platforms. Now, let me show you the power of this. I posted this uh, two days ago, I think. And here it is, it's my YouTube video. There's more to this to get your video to rank like that, which I can record a separate video on that. Um, but you're going to do this for these terms that people are looking for, right, which I have here. So you're going to create your video on how uh, Houston employers can benefit from direct primary care, right? You're going to copy that. That's going to be your title. You're going to use it on YouTube. You're going to upload your video. And then we're going to create an article out of it, right, so that we can get the most out of this. And last strategy is, right, whenever somebody visits our website, right, it's all the same, right? We use LinkedIn, potentially Google, right, if people found us there, to drive people onto our sales funnel or website. And if they don't actually convert, we knew they were interested, right? They took time to read the article they took time to watch the video and then they click through. So we know there's some level of interest, right? It applies to them, but something happened there, right? And that could be uh, their kids started crying, right? Um, they were at work and they had to get back to work, but they didn't have time to enter their information, right? Only a small percentage are gonna actually take action the first time they hit your funnel, right? Typically 10% up to 30%. So what we want to do is we want to give them another opportunity, right? We want to retarget them and say, hey, I'm still here. 
right? Don't forget, we want you to book this appointment with us. Let's say we retarget them. They hit our funnel. They opt in. And for whatever reason, they fall off here, right? We now have their information, so we can send them emails. We can do a ringless voicemail drop, right, with the intention of getting them back onto our booking page. So it's important to have all of these contingencies in place, right, so that we can get the most out of our efforts on this side, right? And this is one of the biggest problems I see, you know, people are posting content, they're running ads, but they don't have the infrastructure in place uh, to convert them, right? And the way I like to think of it is, think about a trauma patient, right, that's bleeding out. Imagine you get a patient with a gunshot wound to the abdomen, and doctor comes in and says, hey, um, well, you know, he needs blood, right? Let's infuse him, right? Let's just load him up with fluids and blood, right? This guy, you'll never leave that, right? What this guy needs is surgery, right? We need to go uh, fix all the holes, right? We need to stop the bleed. But that's what a lot of us do, right? We keep driving traffic to this leaky bucket of our website that isn't built to convert. And we wonder why we're not converting and we have to keep pumping blood, pumping fluids back into it, and it's not retaining anything. And that's because a lot of our websites, they just aren't good, right? They're not built to convert. We're not retargeting them. We're not showing back in front of them. And then we blame it on everything else, right? Oh, Facebook ads, Google ads, they don't work, right? Content, you know, why aren't people booking calls, right? And it's because we don't have all the contingencies in place uh, to get them to convert. So enough on that. Um, Another thing you can do um, from LinkedIn, you can actually download your contacts. So anybody that you're connected with, you can request that data from LinkedIn and then upload that list and create a custom audience and then deliver an ad specifically to them. And most of these people are gonna be business owners, right? So we can create an ad for business owners and show them that ad uh, throughout the Facebook uh, Instagram and network, um, other networks within their audience. And then also you can create a lookalike audience, but it's a lot of information to, for today's video. If you take anything away, you know, uh, optimize your profile, right? We want people to know that you're here to help them, right? That you are in Houston or Nashville or whatever city you are in, right? How can you help them? I want you to contact me, right? I want you to call me, which is why I put my phone number, my information uh, inside my about me. Book a call with me here, right? I wanna talk to you. And then each time I post content, right? Content that I know that people are looking for, we're gonna use it in different places, right? We're gonna post it on YouTube, we're gonna put it on Facebook, we're gonna put it everywhere. And most importantly, we're going to put it on our own blogs. And then we're also going to put it on LinkedIn, right? Because these people that we're connected with, they're going to get a notification saying, hey, Juan just posted this video on how uh, Houston employers can benefit from direct primary care, how it can help them retain their best employees, uh, reduce turnover, reduce sick time, uh, reduce uh, claims on their insurance, right? So that's content that they're going to go watch, right? Because everybody's looking on how to save money on healthcare, right? It's a, one of our biggest expenses uh, here in the States. And then we're going to commit to doing a weekly blog, a vlog, I guess you could call it, a video, right? That we're going to post throughout these different platforms, right? It's like anything, right? You go to the gym, you don't do it once and... Say it doesn't work because you don't have a six pack, right? It's gonna take consistent, disciplined effort, but in a smart, strategic way, right? We also wanna eat healthy. You wanna lift, right, so you don't injure yourself. So if you're watching this training and you're interested in learning more, you can book a call with me, impactgrowthconsultants.com. You can join our group. 
DPC Growth Accelerator if you're interested. And if anything, uh, share this video with somebody if you think um, it can benefit them. All right, guys, that's it for today. Let me know if this was useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you.